Hey, everybody. Attorney Mark J. Victor here with the Attorneys for Freedom Law Firm. And today I've dragged Attorney Jody Broadus out of her busy civil practice to come out and make a video with us so we can talk about personal injury law. How you doing, Jody? I'm doing great. I'm doing great today. Thanks, Mark. I guess main question here, Jody, anybody who drives down the freeway, right, sees billboard after billboard after billboard of these attorneys. And you know, I've I've thought about this for years, right? You see a name, you see a phone number, it says personal injury. Sometimes there's a lot more information like, you know, the tough guy or we'll fight for you or something like that. Why would anybody hire one of these lawyers? What are the upsides and downsides of hiring a lawyer off of a billboard for your personal injury case? Oh, man, I, I have so many things against it. But, uh, you know, you want to get good representation no matter what. And if you go to the doctor, you're not going to look at a billboard and go, you know, hey, 1-800-GOOD-MEDS or 1-800-GOOD-CUTS. Uh, you want to go with somebody that's reliable that you know about. So you want to do your investigation and your homework. These big firms get a lot of cases. And what that means is they're not getting the individual attention on these cases. They're called settlement mills because there's so many cases being processed. And the system that they have in place that you're not going to get that personalized attention that you need on a you know, especially you're dealing with your life here. Yeah, and I don't think people realize just how much money some of these personal injury lawyers spend. The budgets that some of these law firms are blowing through to get cases into the door, I can't even imagine what their overhead is. And what does that do to a civil practice when you got that kind of an overhead? You want your cases to be efficient. You want to move them as quickly as possible. You don't want to spend time on them. You want a quick settlement and move on. And, you know, you've seen these billboards. You mentioned that you, time after time. You recognize these names. You know who also recognizes those names? The insurance companies. Mm -hmm. They know who these companies are. They know they're going to get a quick lowball settlement because they don't want to spend the time working on the case. So you're going to run into these problems along the way that you're not going to get this personalized attention attention that you need on your case. I often describe our law firm more as a boutique law firm. I like to tell people, you know, you come to our law firm, you're going to get personalized attention. We got lawyers who like to be lawyers, lawyers who like to do the kinds of things that lawyers do so they can feel some pride in being a lawyer. And so maybe you could speak to uh, the boutique nature of our firm, what we do that's different than the, let's just call them the big PI mills. Well, first of all, since I'm the only civil attorney in the office, I am handling each one of these cases. I am overseeing everything that's done on each case. We have a small team. We have two paralegals. I work with them day to day on every case. We go through everything in detail. Let me tell you how that differs from these uh, big settlement mills. They have the salesperson that gets the case in the door. Not even a lawyer, right? They come in, they meet with a pitch person sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. I, and then it's handed off to the first person in the mill. That first person, all they do is gather information, pass it off to your next person. What do they do? They might order the medical records. Then it's passed off to a third person who's then going to be, oh, maybe doing a demand letter. And then you go to the next level where the person might negotiate the demand. And then you get to the next person who's going to do a lien. So these people that are working on these cases are not invested. We're invested in every single person that comes in the door and on their case, where a lot of these settlement mills, it's just a process. You're just part of this this system. And I don't even know when and if an attorney even works on it during those stages. A lot of that's paralegal work. It sounds like an assembly line, right? Everybody has their little job they do on the case, and then you get to the end, and it's time to negotiate the case. You're probably, if you even get a lawyer at this point, you probably got a lawyer who's just touching the file for the very first time. They don't really know the client, what it is the client's goals are, what their life is about, what they've really gone through. You know, by the time you're negotiating a case, you've had several meetings with the person. They come in, you know what their life has been like, the emotional toll it's spent on them, who they are, what their family's about. And then when you're calling that case, speaking to that adjuster, you really have a good understanding understanding of what's happened and how it's affected the person's life. And also, we, we litigate our own cases. I mean, that's another important point here. I know some lawyers, they don't even know where the courthouse is, 
Um, I don't know if they're afraid to go to trial or not, but you know, at our firm, we got lawyers here who like to go to trial. I mean, you, Jody, you're in court a lot. You're many days. I say, where's Jody? Oh, she's in court today handling this or that. And uh, in fact, you, you had a trial in a personal injury case not too long ago, and it was a tough case, as I recall. And you got a clean win on that much more than uh, we expected or the client expected. And so speak about that a little bit if you can. Well, you know, I'm a lawyer. I love being in court. It's kind of like preparing for the big show and then you don't get to go to the show. But that's not my focus. I like to prepare every case like we are going to go to the big show. That's, you know, we need to have every detail in place by the time that we're there. I'm not going to wait till the end to start that. I want to start right at the beginning. Hey, and if things get resolved in, in along the way, that's fine. That's great. But we're prepared. And it's funny you mentioned that about talking to the clients and getting the details because a lot of times lawyers we see things differently than the client may see them. Yeah. What may be important and what may not be important. And a lot of times clients didn't think something was important. I'll give you a good example is they were talking about, you know, the horrific accident. They, you know, been bedridden for several weeks. They had to hire a landscaper and they had to hire somebody to come in to help around the house. I wonder how many of those mills know that kind of detail on their cases to be able to submit those bills as part of their loss, part of their damages. Uh, those are details that you get only by talking to the client because why would a client think that those things are, they don't know what we need. We have to get that from them. Um, and that's why the communication is so critical. And I can tell you, Mark, I've gotten so many calls over the years of clients or prospective clients who are fed up with those systems. They can't get a hold of their lawyer. They're not listening. Um, they want out of that. They, they're just they're fed up because they just feel like their case is not important to the, the, the firm they hired. Yeah. And, you know, these insurance companies are pretty competent in terms of keeping records. They know who goes to trial, who doesn't go to trial, who's going to take a quick settlement, and also how they do at trial, right? I mean, just because you go to trial doesn't mean you're going to do a good job at trial. So maybe you can speak to that a little bit in terms of um, the insurance company and the information they gather in terms of different law firms when they see the notice of appearance on the case. Oh, they do their homework. There's no question. They do their homework, not only on the lawyers, but the clients. They're looking on social media. They're doing that with the attorneys and the clients. And they're going to know everything about us. They, you know, there's, there's periodicals that come out that talk about attorneys that have been in trial in Arizona and are certain arbitrations. So they know who they are. They know who those people are that are not afraid to go to that next step. And they know the ones who are, the ones that are going to hide and just settle. They put their foot down. You know, we, everybody's different. And an insurance company, this is a business for them, and I realize that. But you got to take that business and make it personal because that's what it is to these clients. This is a personal thing that's happened to them. They're not a number, and they need the insurance company needs to know that. And if you're just running a system where it's getting passed off person to person, you're not going to get that individualized attention that you need and the fight you need. Yeah, and Jody, you've had some big cases against uh, governmental entities where they really bring a whole law firm on to, to fight you on the case, and you get into the blood and guts of the litigation yourself. You write your own pleadings and motions and respond to everything yourself. And in fact, you worked as a paralegal before you were an attorney, and so even though you've got a really a um, couple of solid paralegals in the civil law department. You know how to do this stuff yourself, and you keep a very high standard. And uh, I've watched you fight off a whole team of lawyers, at, successfully fight off a whole team of big lawyers at big firms when they thought they could crush us. And uh, we've taught them otherwise, right? We'd sp speak to some of that experience. Well, hey, Mark, you know, I don't know if you knew this, but I grew up on a farm in the Midwest where you just roll up your sleeves and you get work done. And sometimes that work is dirty, but you got to get it done. And that's the way I feel about what I do here is we've got to roll up our sleeves and get the work done. These people are depending, our clients are depending on us. And I'm not going to back down to anybody. If I know I'm right and I know my clients are right, we're not backing down. We're going to keep that good fight for them. So I have no problem, you know, taking on as many people. Now, it does get busy and tiring. I don't deny that. But you know what? It's worth it. It's worth it to be able to tell a client we've done everything we can and here's where we are and we're going to, we're going to do well. We're going to do well because of that. We're talking about a lot of different things here with a lot of these settlement mills. You ever noticed on those commercials? We've had billions of dollars in settlements. Yeah, right. Speak to that. You know, 
that's not money that's going in those clients' pockets. That's right. My goal, and I've t- my clients can confess to this. Every time I tell them my goal is to maximize what ends up in your pocket, not what the settlement is. Because you look at this billions of dollars that they say they have. Well, first of all, they're taking their chunk off the top for attorney's fees. Then they're taking another chunk for their uh, costs. Then there are uh, maybe other things that come up. There's usually medical liens. Uh, and usually after you take everything out, there's this small amount that ends up in your pocket afterwards. So those billions of dollars or millions, whatever you see on TV, that's not going in the client's pocket. I'm pretty sure about that. Yeah, and talk about those liens. We do something different at our firm that a lot of other attorneys don't do with those liens. Maybe you can speak to that. Sure. Uh, my philosophy is, 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 well, let me explain what the lien is first. A lot of times you'll go to a health care provider and if you don't have insurance or even if you do, um, there may be a lien against your recovery, which means that if we get a settlement or a judgment on your behalf, we've got to pay back maybe your health insurance company or that medical provider. And my feeling is, is if you're the client, you've got this great case, you've hired us, we're doing all the work. Why do they get paid without taking a cut? Right. You know, they basically got a free attorney to get their money back on their lien. I don't like that. Right. So we always negotiate or try to negotiate with them, and we do a pretty good job to have them, you know, take a, l- a little bit less. Again, my goal, more money in the client's pocket. That's the goal. Yeah, I think that's the nice way of saying it. I've seen you get in there and beat up some of those lien holders in the past. You come back and say, wow, look, at we got them to reduce the lien. That means more money in the client's pocket. And I think a lot of attorneys might skip that step and say, well, that's the lien. Let's just get it paid off the top. Maybe it doesn't put more money into their pocket, but it puts more money into the client's pocket. You know, I've said, do your research on the lawyer who you're thinking of hiring, right? Don't just hire somebody because you saw their name on a billboard or some spiffy ad came across the television. Do your homework and find out who's actually going to be representing you in uh, you're putting your case in, in the hands of this lawyer. Find out about the lawyer. You know, that's a great point because there's a lot of information out there and you've got to wonder if it's, is this legitimate information? I'll yeah. give you a good example. You call up the attorney, they go, oh, we have doctors we can send you to. Oh, that's wonderful. The attorney has these these contacts for me. Well, first of all, what's going to come up in your case is the, the insurance company is going to ask you because they're going to at some point they're going to probably ask you, hey, how did you get the name of this doctor? Oh, my attorney referred me. Oh, so it wasn't medically necessary. So now you're stuck trying to find out, hey, can we actually claim this med- these medical expenses? That's your first issue. The second issue I have is where is the attorney's loyalty? when it comes to dealing with these healthcare providers. Because if these healthcare providers, they got a deal, hey, I send you clients, you send me clients, where's where's that loyalty to your, your actual client? Yeah, they got a financial incentive to try to get that a lien holder paid the top dollar on the case because that lien holder is sending them cases. And so you really can't ignore it. I'm glad you put some light on this sort of behind the scenes situation. Plus that insurance company, if you get into litigation, they're going to find out how many cases have been referred from that lawyer to the doctor and the doctor to the lawyer. And they're going to present that to the jury. And they're going to say, ladies and gentlemen, this is a racket. These uh, the, the doctor sends cases to the lawyer. The lawyer sends cases to the doctor. They each work up their fees and don't be fooled. And so we don't get into that because we don't have that high volume of practice because we don't have the overhead of billboards and television commercials and all of that and the big pay-per-click dollars. We just don't do it. We survive based on our reputation. And so people should check out the Attorneys for Freedom Law Firm. Check out our five-star reviews. Check out the people who specifically mention Jody brought us and say that, you know, Jody and her team did such a great job on my civil case. That's why people come back to the Attorneys for Freedom Law Firm. I don't think you want to go with a firm that's too small and has no resources. I think that's another thing is when you reach out to our firm, you actually talk to the attorneys. You know their names. These big firms, sometimes they don't even post who their attorneys are on their website. It's they're all behind the scenes, so you'll never even know. That's another thing that people complain about a lot is the turnover yeah. that a lot of those firms have. That you know they uh, they've had three or four different people in the last year on their case, and uh, that doesn't sit well. Yeah, and yeah. you know, interesting. Everybody's had problems with employees over the past several years, and we changed our hiring policy. We hire people now for character. Character first. If they are not of the highest character, we simply can't use them at our firm. So. Um, anybody who comes to our firm and interacts with our staff, I think, will get that feeling pretty quick right from 
the people at the front desk, all the way to the end of the case when we're closing your file. I think people are going to feel like, you know what, I've dealt with people here who care about high character and who conduct themselves that way, who care about conducting their practice to the highest standards of professionalism. That's what we do at our firm, and uh, I'm proud of the firm we've built. I'm proud of our civil department, and I want to thank you, Jody, for coming on and uh, saying a few things about our civil department so people have more information about uh, what we do in our civil department. Any final thoughts? Well, you know, anybody can call. If you have any questions, you can give us a call or go to our website. I'm more than happy to talk to people. A lot of times people don't know if they have a case. Yeah. I'll sit down and talk to them. You know, I, I'm pretty candid. Yeah. I, I, won't, I don't want people, you know, misleading me. I don't mis- mislead other people. So, you know, if there's a case, I'll let them know and let them know their options. Uh, give us a call anytime. Yeah, on, on many occasions, you've told people, look, you got a case probably doesn't make sense to get a lawyer involved because you're going to wind up losing too much money and you can do this on yourself here's what you should do do a do b do c get it resolved if you have any problems come back to me that's the kind of thing people remember and uh, appreciate about when they meet with a lawyer they say you know what i met with an honest lawyer somebody who gave me good straightforward advice our goal is always to represent people exactly the way we would want to be represented ourselves we're in a car accident a pedestrian accident, motorcycle accident, boating accident, trucking accident, any type of car accidents or motor vehicle accidents. But not only that, we've dealt with people who have burned by different types of things, cosmetology burns. There's all sorts of cases out there. If you've been injured, give me a call and I'll talk to you about it. Okay, so there's a little bit from our personal injury department. If you have questions, check out our firm attorneysforfreedom.com. If you like this video, subscribe, leave a comment below whether you like or dislike anything we said. If you bring it civilized, you will get a response from us. All right, everybody. Hope you answered your questions. If you have other ones, you know how to get a hold of us. Peace, everybody.